A long sigh is a great way to start an apology video. So some of you may have expected my usual colorful animated style, but for an apology video, I feel I needed to address my audience in a more genuine way because nothing says genuine and authentic quite like the acting classes I took. Now, some of you might be wondering why a channel that deals in terrible writing advice would make a video on apologies. I'm just getting ahead, since I will no doubt inevitably screw up in the PR department and be forced to issue a career-saving apology. Perhaps I let fly a racial slur and only the blood of my career will sate the righteous anger of the internet's denizens. Perhaps I suffered a concussion and thought that a terrible writing advice on sexual assault tropes was a great idea. Maybe someone finally found the beaten and starving ghost writers I keep chained up in my basement that write these episodes. Regardless of the reasons, I need to apologize to save my hide, and I thought I might as well teach other writers to do their own apology videos, because in these times, absolutely no one is too obscure that one day they might wake up to find an internet hate mob at their door. I'm sorry, but I must teach everyone how to do an apology video. Now, after the long sigh, the first thing needed for an apology video is to not apologize. This is very important. The first point in an apology video is to state that I am very sorry other people were offended by what I did or said. The important thing to remember is that I am always the victim here and that I am entitled to everyone's sympathy. What needs to be done to earn this sympathy? By being the victim, obviously, and certainly not by explaining any extenuating circumstances in a clear and easy to understand way. People on the internet said very mean things about me after all, and that is totally equivalent to misleading millions of underage fans to a gambling website or using my position of power and authority to solicit young women through blackmail. Speaking of those awful things, the next phase of the apology video should be filled to the brim with weak excuses and shallow justifications. There is no excuse for what I did, but I'm going to offer those excuses anyway. It's okay that I embezzled hundreds of thousands of dollars because I deserved it since the company was dumb enough to let me manage their money. Yes, I emotionally abused my employees, but they shouldn't have been so weak. And I had no idea that exposing yourself to a fan during a private meetup in a hotel room wasn't okay. I mean, how was I supposed to know that? It's not like our culture has a deep shared taboo of nudity that would have given me the context needed to understand my behavior was inappropriate. Everyone else was doing it, so that makes it okay when I do it. Young men in their late 50s just didn't know any better. Wait, I got it. I'm depressed. Hiding behind depression can be a very important go-to tactic when it comes to staving off the internet's vengeance and provide an easy out for any and all reprehensible actions. I'm not worried about real people who suffer from depression calling me out. What are they going to do? They're depressed. Speaking of depressing, let's check that like to dislike bar to see how things are going. Whoa, not so good. Maybe I should pick something else, something obscure. I know everyone is angry about that video where I made a homeless man twerk while I rained dollar bills on him, but in my defense, I suffer from eosinophilic esophagitis? Well, that sounds bad, so I'm sure it will win me lots of sympathy points and easily wave away any and all past transgressions. Wow, I sure am looking around an awful lot as though I'm searching for a way out. Any way out of this freaking mess. Too bad for me that I need to stretch out this video for more ads. Is it tasteless to use an apology video to generate ad revenue? You bet. Shameless even. But I'm going to do it anyways because apology videos like most online drama is solid freaking gold in terms of views and traffic. After all, I'm not here to really apologize for the thing I did, but to add another notch to my precious brand. Speaking of which, let's check the engagement. Um, I mean dislike bar. Oh man, this is not going very well. I don't think people are buying it and might see through my self-serving ad placements and petty rationalizations. I need a new tactic. Well, what I did might be bad, but other people have done worse. See? I just deflected onto someone else. Pick another pseudo-celebrity to rail against, preferably someone high profile with a lot of baggage, who can make me look good in comparison. The modern world is full of awful people that can help me lower that apology bar so I can step right over it. Yes, whatever my transgression is will not be erased, but that's not the point. The point is to distract everyone. 
This can also just as easily be accomplished by talking about some other greater societal ill or problem. Just remember to not accidentally and concisely frame your transgressions against real problems in a way that sets everything into perspective. The goal is to deflect externally, not reflect internally. That not working? Well, that's just the first punch. Now for the follow-up. You see, I may be an immoral scumbag who did something unspeakable, but I intend to use this experience to grow as a person. You see, I learned a lot about not getting caught and where I need to look to improve myself and to help those around me. I am truly awakened to the full harm I have caused and will change for the better. I mean, I won't, but that doesn't sound as good. Okay, let's see if that worked. Nope. I need to break out the big guns. Better bring on the tears. Crocodile tears is the best bet for swaying the audience. Bawling like a bratty child is an instant method to win over a group of people sick of your immature antics. Admittedly, this mostly works if you are cute and a girl. Guys just have to settle with speaking in a shaky voice. Can't cry on command? Just watch Shawshank Redemption. That always turns on the waterworks. There's got to be a good Adobe After Effects plugin that generates fake tears. Has all of this failed? Is creating a video to apologize too much work? Well, then it's time to turn to the corporate apology. We deeply apologize for the harm we have caused. The actions of those who did this are not in line with our core values. We will strive to do better in the future and set into place systems to prevent such an occurrence from happening again. See, you can fit all that into a tweet. I'm sure those 230 characters will make up for the tens of thousands of children our company poisoned because we greased a few palms in the FDA to push our product through without proper testing. Which brings us to the best way to handle an apology video. You see, there is an easy trick for escaping this whole mess without the need for an apology video at all. To do this, the first and most important step, don't, don't skip this part, is to be a mega super rich billionaire. Uh, so get on that. Then all one has to do is build a massive wall made out of cash and man that wall with the best PR department and spend doctor's money can buy, all while hiding your identity behind a large faceless corporation. Uh, this is what we call easy mode. If things get really bad, then ruthlessly sacrifice, um, I mean, let go of a couple of middle managers. Yeah, just throw a couple of stooges to the wolves. That should placate the internet's endless career bloodlust for a few days at least. See, that was painless for me. Boy, it's a good thing that doesn't happen to people without access to near endless financial resources or who lack a pre-established audience. That would be near impossible to come back from, especially if they have no experience understanding narratives, because creating an apology video is all about controlling the narrative. And the narrative that needs to be cultivated is one that shows weakness and confirms guilt, not one that lays out the evidence in a clear and concise manner and allows for the audience to make up their own mind. But what if one finds themselves having to make an apology video even though no heinous act was committed. I know this is far-fetched. When has the majority been in the wrong before? That would never happen. Just like the people of the internet losing all sense of perspective. Still, theoretically, if one sincerely believes they didn't do anything wrong, then the best thing to do is to abandon one's principles as soon as possible and grovel like the spineless, greedy brand slave that they are. Because an apology video isn't about apologizing, but rather a stopgap public relations measure to patch up short-term subscriber loss. No one makes an apology video to defend their values, principles, morals, choices, or anything else. They are here to defend something more important, the brand. Uh, but uh, um, I, I really do sincerely feel bad for whatever horrible thing I did to merit making an apology video. I am so, so sorry. I promise to do better. I swear to you from the bottom of my heart that from this moment on, I will not be greedy, petty, or self-serving. That I have truly changed into someone who is authentic and honest. I would never cynically use an apology video to push my brand because I'm above that. Because I have apologized. So don't forget to check out my merch. Um, also, be sure to like and subscribe. Ring that notification button. <laughs> Should I have spaced those out a little more?